what we gather out of our our data is you know uh, we're able to talk in different terms with our customers and 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 tell them where they are with our business um, up to the minute and help them improve their business welcome to the smarter building materials marketing podcast helping you find better ways to grow leads sales and outperform your competition all right, everybody, welcome to Smarter Building Materials Marketing, where we believe your online presence should be your best salesperson. I am Zach Williams, alongside my co-host, Beth Popnikolov. And today we're talking about data, specifically how you can connect the dots between the data and the different parts of your organization to make better decisions, whether that's product development, marketing, sales, customer service. Data is becoming a bigger and bigger role of a lot of manufacturers. And we want to talk about that today with a really great guest we have lined up for you. We are really excited to welcome Bob Sanders. He is the director of sales at Shouldice, Designer Stone, and Fusion Stone. His company is spending lots of time in the data and making it work to improve their customer experience, improve their manufacturing. He's got lots to share with us. Bob, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Appreciate so- it. Before we get started, why don't you take a couple minutes to introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah. Well, uh, my name is Bob Sanders, uh, Director of Sales at uh, Shouldice Designer Stone and Fusion Stone. Uh, I'm about uh, uh, about five days away from uh, my 18th year uh, with the company. Uh, so I'm very excited uh, for that milestone. Uh, one thing in our company is um, we have a long, a lot of long tenured employees, uh, as well as the, the the new crop that are coming up to uh, teach us new ways, and uh, and things like that on uh, on how to do business and and how to talk data and thing, things like that. The industry we're in is a very old traditional industry within the masonry world, uh, within the building supply, and. Um, you know, we try to find new ways of, uh, of doing business and connecting with our customers. Bob, who are your customers? Who, who do you market to? Well, that's, uh, I love that question because we have two segments to our company, uh, Shouldice Designer Stone and Fusion Stone. On the Shouldice side, we are uh, the traditional masonry side uh, that requires a mason. You know, you're installing the brick and the stone. Uh, whether it's on a home or a, a government building, a school, office tower, whatever that is. And um, you, you require specialized uh, trades uh, for that. And that industry has been around forever. And the other segment to our company is the one thing we always wanted to do is try to talk to the consumer, try to talk to an end user, because our product is typically funneled through you know, uh, the architecture community, through the trade, through a builder, et cetera. With our Fusion Stone, we created a, a do-it-yourself product uh, that is masonry, a thin stone that's mechanically fastened or it's screwed to the wall. And uh, we are uh, about uh, 12 or 13 years in on that product line. So what it's enabled us to do is talk to all segments of, uh, of markets. So we talk everything from the architect to a builder, to a designer, to the mason, to our consumer now, and all through then through our dealer networks and our distribution. So what it's really done for our company is we get, we're educated on all aspects of of the building industry, whether it's uh, commercial, industrial, institutional, or uh, residential. So we're very fortunate to have our our feelers out to uh, all sorts of customer uh, groups and, and markets out there. Bob, a lot's changed with COVID. And I know that's like the topic of everyone's conversation, mm-hmm. but I'd love to hear what are you all doing from a marketing and sales standpoint that's helping you to fulfill demand as well as reach new customers? You know, before it's a conversation we've had for some time before uh, COVID hit. Is there a better way out there? Is there a more effective way? Um, you know, with markets changing and the consumer changing and the consumer be- becoming much more educated on your product sometimes before you even uh, have FaceTime with them. 
Um, what it allowed us to do was to sort of, it pushed us into that corner and realized, you know, with our external sales force, our inside customer support, and with our marketing, um, you know, we had to pivot fairly quickly, like most people did, on how to keep in contact with that, with that customer. Because that customer that we were very used to in a traditional way um, of, a, you know, still the phone, an email, a Zoom, or going into their office, um, a lot of things changed and we had to utilize different ways to still make contact. And our, a lot of our customers, they went home. They went home and set up that home office and uh, they became a little harder to reach out to. And so those challenges, it, it, it forced us a bit to get in more into social media, um, more into, you know, uh, uh, direct links with emails and, and things like that. Um, you know, traditional old school ways of using the phone. And, you know, it's once we, you kind of had to reestablish your communication link. And then once you reestablish that, um, then you found with each of your customers how they wanted to be. Uh, they still wanted to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, they typically don't reach out to you. It's our responsibility to reach out to them. And, uh, so, uh, we, we found it in a multitude of ways of, uh, of uh, reaching out to them through that. So if we can, let's talk about the data that you learned mm -hmm. from those big pivots. Yes. What is the data telling you about your outreach communications, the ways that you had to change to stay in connection with your customers, and how are you integrating that as you go into this next year? Well, we've uh, we've been working through data for for several years now, and and uh, uh, twenty twenty into twenty one has been our uh, deep dive. Let's put it that way uh, through our business intelligence, and um, it paints it paints various pictures. Um, you know, it's what it's it's how you what you want to extract from that, and and how you connect that information, and what it what it's told us um, because we've had to rely on that data um, in some aspects to help tell the story on what was occurring in the last uh, eighteen months, and we monitor everything. You know, we monitor whether we're speaking to a customer. Um, the orders that those customers are placing, the orders that maybe they're not placing and why, um, you know, the, the, uh, the competitive nature, um, we, tr we track competition and what they're doing, not doing, um, and we compare ourselves in a lot of different aspects. Um, we're very much a, an out-of-the-box uh, type of company that um, likes to do our thing while keeping an eye on others. And um, the one thing that we've really learned is, um, is to embrace uh, through the data, is to embrace the different ways of doing business. And I think, I think COVID is, has forced uh, many, us, into that. Um, when you come from such a traditional industry like ours, um, it's, it's, it's a relationship-based industry. It's a lot of older uh, generation within the industry, whether it's uh, uh, trades, masons, builders, et cetera. Um, and it's how to embrace them. And with the younger generation that are bringing in wonderful new ideas on how to speak to customers and how to utilize the data um, in, in speaking to your customer. You know, the data doesn't, take away from that relationship. It doesn't take away from that personal relationship. If we used to see a customer once a month, and it's a debate we've often had, do we need to see that customer once a month? Maybe that customer we can speak um, quarterly mm -hmm. and provide better information to help them drive their business and uh, you know, utilize our company to help them within their problem solving, the challenges, products that they're looking for and, and things like that. 
the data, at the end of the day, we want to be better today than we were yesterday. We want to grow more today than we did yesterday. So the data uh, helps point us in a multitude of, uh, of directions. Bobby, you mentioning data. Like, are you collecting that via your CRM or your ERP or your Google Analytics? What type of, can you, you know, get specific? Yes, yes, with, yes. Yeah. Can, you, can you get specific uh, with me? Like, can you, give me an example. Can like maybe tell through like the lens of a story. Give me an example yeah, of, yeah. hey, we looked at this particular data on this customer using X, Y, and Z. And, yeah. you know, you don't have so to our cut. ERP is connected to our CRM. Mm-hmm. Uh, we utilize business in, uh, intelligence, uh, which we call stone man intelligence. And, like um, like and it's a, a company-wide um, uh, 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 program that, that we have. And um, you could look at it and say, oh my goodness, info overload. Um, but everything uh, that comes into the company um, is pulled through in, in, uh, in those various programs, which ultimately lands in the business intelligence. And it's broken out you know, behind the scenes, obviously it's been written, uh, to accommodate what we require and, um, from analyzing everything from, you know, uh, sales and quotations and product development and, and, um, marketing and competition. And, and so we have multiple dashboards that we pull that information. Um, so you're, get, you're getting information from your CRM, from your ERP, from all of that online and then you're putting it into one centralized dashboard. Yeah. Are you are you then viewing that as like a team, or is that like individually? You've got like, hey, you're in sales, so you're like you're really looking at these parts of it, or is it like a like, is it a part of the way that you all are doing business now, where you're actually reviewing those dashboards together? I think is I'm trying yeah. to get I'm trying to get a picture of like how yeah, how great. is like grabbing yeah. the data and doing something with it. What does it look like? Great to you? question. It's a great question because. Uh, sales and marketing um, has a specific dashboard. Mm-hmm. Uh, production um, in all the elements within production, they have a certain dashboard. Um, so finance, a specific dashboard. Uh, management, uh, we cover uh, all aspects of those dashboards. Our external team, our sales team, they have a dashboard uh, dedicated to what they require uh, through that day. So how we monitor it, uh, we monitor it uh, individually, uh, specific to our dashboards. And uh, we, we meet every morning um, to review all aspects of uh, the company. And that is uh, sales uh, and marketing, uh, production, uh, customer service support. Uh, we touch on all of that over, you know, kind of a quick 15-minute uh, uh, roundtable. Um, with mem- many members within administration and management. And then uh, um, other times through the week when you deep dive specifically into, uh, into certain aspects of that, uh, that information. So I'm imagining that these dashboards are also a big part of your annual strategic planning. Can you give me an example of something that you're going to start doing and something you're going to stop doing in 2022 based on data? Um, So without... Maybe without giving me your secret sauce. Yeah, that's okay. Um, (laughs) We're coming in. It's it's an interesting question because we're coming into our 75th year as a company. Um, We're a third generation. uh, We're a family-owned business. And we stretch uh, coast to coast in Canada and uh, a good chunk of the U.S. Our products are, are on trucks every day, uh, heading somewhere. somewhere. And, um, you know, we've in, in, in old ways, older traditional ways, you've, you've always used data in some form. Um, and but a lot of decisions are made on your gut. You know, emotional feel, uh, what you think, what you hear, and um, and that's how companies. Uh, a lot of time, that's how companies are built. And you integrate the data. Um, you want, you always want reassurance when you've made a decision, and and data um, helps support that reassurance. But. You know, it's also that caution. You want to be cautious because you want to make sure that you don't 
you don't lose that that driver, that entrepreneurial spirit, where a lot of times it does come from your gut or your head, and uh, you you still want to run with that idea or that new product idea, uh, but you have a keen eye on data and and what it's and what it's telling you. And I think uh, to your question, Beth, I I believe our decisions today especially in product development are made more um, on a data support Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to um, just sort of a round table. What does everybody think? Yeah. And basing um, it on actual metrics and actual numbers that have been measured and tested over a period of time. It's not that feel it's you're moving it from an art to a science. Yeah. And so much, like in any company, in ours specifically, there's you collect so much information. There's so much information that comes in minute by minute into our company. And, you know, you have to be able to decipher that information and, and where it's going to help you uh, be, be better, essentially. And because every, most employees on this property are contributing to that information. They're, they're collecting all of that and they're facilitating it and entering uh, from external sales to production. Everybody at every second of the day is putting something into that, into that uh, business intelligence. If you had to distill it down, Bob, in terms of the benefit that this type of process has, has brought your organization of integrating in, as you said, like everyone in the organization is using this data and this business intelligence to make better decisions. If you had to distill down the benefit that this has brought your organization, what would it be? Is it, Hey, you make decisions more confidently. Do you make it with better speed? Is there better alignment? Like what are, what would you say is the single biggest benefit that this has brought you and your organization? I think one of the one of the biggest things it's done is we become more transparent uh, within the company within mm, ourselves. I like that. And um, you kind of get siloed in you. You know, if it's a sales thing, you have the sales group talking about it. If it's marketing, you're talking with the marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And what the data collection and business intelligent, you know, it's how you embrace it, but it sort of forces you. You need collaboration now from all aspects of the company. And when you're developing a new product um, in the past, as I said, you might round table it and say, what do you think? But today you need to have finance. You need to have marketing. You need to have sales. You need to have production. Production might put their hand up and say, we can't do that. Um, you know, and so I think our, the, the biggest thing is it's, it's we become, we've opened ourselves up more uh, within the management group and within the employees as well as to as to what we're doing, and then I also I also believe um, it's made us more uh, uh, efficient, it's more effective, and uh, everybody's busy. You know, it's a cliche, but everybody's busy. Um, and when you speak to your customer um, or drop by to see them, you. You, you don't want to waste your time. You're there for a reason. And, and you're not just dropping by to drop off a coffee for them and say hello. Sometimes that works, um, but they're busy. And what we gather out of our, our data is, you know, uh, we're able to talk in different terms with our customers and, and, and tell them where they are with our business um, up to the minute and help them improve their business when they when they improve we improve and so it's a it's a it's a long uh, trickle down effect um, so we've we've definitely seen the benefit of from you know the investment of obviously dollars and time and people in into this on how we manage our company today what advice would you give to a manufacturer who wants to start measuring more, wants to start making more data-based decisions, but is still in that gut feel round table phase. Where do I start? What do I measure first? What would be the most impactful? Really where we started is through uh, CRM. And um, 
You know, it's those everyday conversations that you're now logging, tracking uh, with your customers. And those conversations, um, you know, old school ways, you know, the sales rep would have a notebook and they'd write things down or make a note in their phone. And, but often that information didn't go anywhere unless you happen to talk to your manager or your fellow employee and uh, um, it just become, becomes lost. And um, so m- my advice is I think CRM um, is, a, is a must have um, in any company is to collect that, collect those conversations, collect that information and build that profile and build that uh, um, uh, file of your customer. You know your customer very well get that file going and understand from that. And then from there, um, then you explore, you know, a business intelligence uh, uh, platform uh, that you can now start to pull through all of that information that gets dumped into business intelligence and it starts to segment things. But I, I believe the biggest thing we did was um, when we dipped our toe into CRM, it's, it's like, Oh, Okay. You know, and, and uh, but, but like anything change and new ways, it, it, it takes a bit. And, and I can't imagine not have, I can't imagine not having it today. Yeah, it's great. Bob, uh, this has been great, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank if you. someone wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, probably just through uh, shouldice.ca. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, they can find us, uh, through, uh, through that fusionstone.ca. Um, you can find me definitely through, uh, through the, any of those, uh, aspects. That's great. We'll make sure we link to that on the show notes as well. And for our listeners, if Perfect. you enjoyed this content, make sure you go to venvio.com slash podcast to subscribe until next time. I'm Zach Williams alongside Beth Popnikolov. Thanks everybody. Thanks.